A lot of people do a lot of things in search of a long and healthy life. Complicated diet plans, gym memberships, and expensive dietary supplements. But in a four-part Netflix series called Live to 100, Secrets of the Blue Zone, best-selling author Dan Buettner says a lot of that is misguided. He traveled to places he calls blue zones, where more people live significantly longer than average, trying to figure out how they do it. Recently, I spoke with Buettner and asked him why he chose to start a series on longevity in a cemetery. I think it's facing the inevitable. Uh, we're all going to get frail. Uh, we're all going to die. But uh, when we, uh, how long we want to be on this earth, we have a lot of say in that matter. So we started uh, at the end and, and then went back from there. When you found these blue zones, were there some themes running through all of them? Yes. If you want to know what a 100-year-old ate to live to be 100, you have to know what she was eating as a child and middle age and newly retired. So to get at that, uh, we found 155 dietary surveys done in all five blue zones over the last 80 years, and we averaged them with the help of Harvard. And we found that 90 to 95% they're eating a whole food plant-based diet meat only about five times per month. And contrary to a lot of sort of keto slash paleo diet advice, it's mostly carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates, which I think shocks a lot of people. When I first started writing about this, I did a cover story for National Geographic in 2005. Nobody was connecting loneliness to longevity. And I was pointing out the importance of strong social connections and social circles. And it turns out that's worth about seven years of extra life expectancy. But the big revelation, and you never hear about it because it's not sexy and marketers can't sell you things, but long, an extra 10 years of life expectancy is the sum of lots of small improvements we, we make in our lives, mostly in our environment, applied for decades. Are these blue zones in any way endangered? You talk about Okinawa now having an obesity problem, that family in Costa Rica where the young boy just wants cereal. Are these in endangered locations? As soon as the American food culture comes in the front door, longevity goes out the back door. And I'm giving most of these blue zones a half a generation before they completely adopt our way of life and therefore start adopting our obesity rates and diabetes and heart disease rates. It's a tragedy, actually. But at the same time, you also tried to create some blue zones in Albert Lee, Minnesota, and Fort Worth, Texas. What lessons did you learn from that? The big lesson is don't try to change your behavior. You'll fail for almost all the people almost all the time in the long run. You change people's environments. In other words, you design for health. Our blue zone projects unleash a swarm of healthy nudges and defaults that are put in place for years. They're mostly environmental, making cities walkable policies that favor healthy food over junk food and so forth. And setting Americans up for success, as opposed to the failure our food environment portends right now, every city we work in, we've seen major improvements in people's health and we've seen obesity drop and we've seen uh, uh, healthcare cost savings in the, in the hundreds of millions of dollars. So it sounds like it's not just personal behavior, but it's also, as you say, policies, making cities more walkable, designing you know, streets and neighborhoods like that. I have no faith, and I don't know of any research where you can change a population's health by trying to convince individuals to change their behavior or somehow imbue them with responsibility. We're genetically hardwired to crave fat, salt, and sugar and take rest whenever we want. So unless we set up our environment where it's easy for us to eat, basically whole food, plant-based, easier for us to walk than it is to drive, we're going to continue to see uh, health care costs in the trillions as we're seeing today in America. You talked also about in the uh, in the series about something we've talked about on this broadcast, the fact that life expectancy is becoming shorter. And a lot of it is because younger people are dying from suicides, homicides, drug overdoses and car accidents, all preventable. This, none of this is, a, is an organic problem. Did you learn anything in, in your work uh, that would relate to that? The number one killer in America is our diet. We lose about 660,000 Americans prematurely to the way we eat.